along with Glenn Cerny here on Aggie Vision as the Arizona Wildcats take on the New Mexico State Aggies and a very strong student crowd has turned out for this game. Tonight's keys to the game are presented by Comcast. We Rem remind viewers that Comcast subscribers are the only ones to see every single one of our live Aggie Vision telecasts this season. You know, Jeff, I think one of the top keys is run the offense. For the Aggies, every team they played has packed it in and dared them to shoot from outside. So they're going to have to run their offense. Just because they're open outside doesn't mean it's a good shot. And the uh, other two, it's uh, make sure that who's going to win the boards because the boards are going to dictate this game. Both teams are very good on the boards. And lastly, keep playing D. I don't know the number of times that I saw a 35-second violation on the opponent during the Great Alaska Shootout. They've been playing great defense, and the low scoring shows that. So they've got to keep that effort up. There you see the Arizona huddle, the New Mexico State huddle. And let's take a look at the New Mexico State starting lineup. It's the usual. Christian Cabango, point guard Ernst LaRoche, leading scorer and le leading uh, rebounder Wendell McKinnis, Hamadou Rahman, and Ty Watson, the starting five for Marvin Menzies' group tonight. For the Wildcats, it's Turner, Mays, Fogg, Perry, who's their leading rebounder, and Solomon Hill, who's the leading scorer for the Wildcats, Glenn. Yeah, and, and Jeff, the, the Arizona Wildcats are a team searching for an identity right now. You lose a player the quality of, of Derek Williams, and, and you're going to have a hole to fill. And we were talking to some of the folks, as you see Christian Convago with uh, Coach Menzies in his record, but they, they, they need to step it up. Each one of the players needs to do what they do, not try to be a Derek Williams. Marvin Menzies in his fifth season. And the head coach at Arizona, Sean Miller. Miller in there somewhere. That's He's in his third season, 50 and 25, Glenn. That's not bad. They won the Pac-12 last year in his second year. No, and, and even more impressive from his years at Xavier. It's his eighth year in coaching, and he's 170 and 72. So that gives you an indication of the caliber of coach that he is. There's a reason Arizona went to get him. So Sean Miller takes his Wildcats on the there road. To the Pan American Center, getting to know the foe, the Arizona Wildcats University founded back in 1885, enrollment south of 40,000. McHale Center, their home, terrific home court advantage for the Wildcats. They're in the Pac-12, they won it a year ago. And their notable alumni, the creator of Sesame Street, Joan Gans Cooney. I get to work with Victor, how neat is that? <laughs> Outstanding officiating crew here tonight. Well, let's wait on that one. As we get ready to tip it off here, there's a good look at Watson. Ramon, meanwhile, goes up after it for New Mexico State, and the Aggies control the tip. And New Mexico State will get first crack at it. Arizona shook up their starting lineup a little bit, took the big guy out of the middle. And Ramon fumbles it out on the perimeter. Watson keeps it alive. They go inside to Ramon to the basket, scoops and scores. Jeff, that's what I like to see. They work the offense. Yeah, the roach was open, but he didn't take the shot. He got it underneath. Aggies are pressing. Turnover. McKinnis to the basket. He missed. The Roche's tip won't fall. Wendell goes up. He draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Aggies go pressing against, after the first make. Going to go against Solomon Hill. Well, we talked about uh, Ernst LaRoche on the offense, but his defense has been very good as well. He's can uh, steal the ball, averaging over one steal a game. McKinnis, a 67% free throw shooter. Free throws will be a key to the game tonight as well. New Mexico State's taking so many free throws this year because they're uh, pounding it inside. Got the big guys getting to the foul line a lot, and they're going to have to make those freebies. It's amazing the advantage they have in free throws, and I'll get to that in a second, Jeff. Four nothing Aggies, and New Mexico State will press. That's Solomon Hill bringing it up, and the officials in the bottom right-hand corner. That is a final four-type group. 
Hill finds Perry alone for the slam dunk underneath Jesse Perry. NCAA West Regional All-Turning Team for the Wildcats in the NCAA Tournament. Ten and a half points a game. Glenn slams it home, and it's a two-point game. And some good patience by the Wildcat offense. Watson skips it along the baseline to LaRoche. Penetrates, kicks. McKinnis is open top of the circle. That's a three-pointer for Wendell McKinnis. Wendell, 37% out at the uh, three-point line for the Aggies in New Mexico State with a great start. Bringing it up is Mays. Working against LaRoche. Man-to-man defense for New Mexico State. And on the right side, Spog. We highlighted him in the open. His shot might have been changed by McKinnis. I think he might have got a little bit of that. Here come the Aggies. Cabongo to the basket. Tried to dump it to McKinnis. Wendell comes up with it anyway, takes it outside the arc, and he hits. Wendell McKinnis already has eight. Aggies ten, Wildcats two, and the Wildcats have to take the timeout. Great start. You couldn't draw it up any better for New Mexico State. And, and Jeff, you know what? This is the exact same nightmare that the Arizona Wildcats did not want to see. This is what happened against San Diego State, and it's what happened to them in New York, is they got off to a very, very slow start, or their opponent got off to a fast start. Either way, it's not what they wanted to see, to fall behind on the road. This is their first game on the road. And uh, again, the other two were at a neutral site. And you can see the series history, somewhat deceptive. Uh, Wildcats won big last year in uh, Tucson, and one of the big reasons for that, we mentioned him already, Derek Williams, 27 points and 14 rebounds in that win. But I guarantee you, Sean Miller had warned them, we can't fall behind early. A lot of time left, Jeff, but you don't want to fall behind early. Aggies to continue the press. Nick Johnson has checked into the game for Arizona. He handles the basketball now. With a 6 freshman. freshman from Gilbert, Arizona, hometown boy practically, just up the road in the Phoenix area. Bill kicks to Johnson. Aggies with that pressure defense. That's Kyle Fogg, left side hill, left wide open, but he missed it. Wildcats shoot 35% out there. Cabongo top of the circle, leaves it for McKinnis going to the basket. And good interior defense by the Wildcats. Hill wants to run, kicks left corner, Fogg for three. Big bucket for the University of Arizona. That's Fogg, 39% from beyond the arc. The average is 11 and a half a game for the Wildcats. Aggies by five. LaRoche. Nice quarter. Slam dunk on the other end for Nick Johnson, the freshman. He has three double-figure games this year. At 10 points. Seven rebounds against their last opponent, San Diego State, a loss for the University of Arizona. LaRoche lost it, tips it over left side to Bongo. Circles the rim, rebound pulled down by Perry, who's their leading rebounder, at about nine rebounds a game. Johnson missed, Perry gets the rebound left corner. Perry drives, working on Raman. Missed the bunny. Rebound to McKinnis. Two on four for the Aggies. LaRoche will slow it up. Trailing is Watson. Gets into the paint and misses badly. Nice move, but he didn't finish. And he got hit on transition. Going to the basket is Hill. He scores. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Right now, Jeff, the Wildcats are getting down the floor much, much quicker than the Aggies are in creating those open shots on the transition. There you see Watson with the whack on the way to the basket for Hill. 12 to 9. Arizona survives the Aggie hot start. I want to welcome uh, two relatively new uh, groups watching tonight's game. I'd like to welcome everybody in Arizona watching at home there. And also want to welcome KBIA. And they'll be broadcasting the games on one of their sub-channels for the rest of the year as well. Welcome to the wonderful confines of the Pan American Center. Free throw good by Hill. And that makes it a two-point game. The Mexico State 12, University of Arizona 10. Arizona 4-2 on the year. They were a free 
season top 25 team. The two losses in a row have knocked them out of the bowl. Kabongo leaves it a little short. Rebound in down by Parham, who's checked in. Ahead to Johnson. Johnson to the rack, reverse, pretty move. Got some speed there, too. Absolutely. So Johnson certainly gave him a lift off the bench, Glenn. And we're all tied at 12. Mullings has checked in for New Mexico State. Wearing 23 underneath the basket. Top of your screen. That's him with the ball there. Cabongo will reset now with 17 on the shot clock. Aggie's going with a shorter lineup now. And on top, Watson will penetrate. Kicks left corner for Banjasi, and he fumbles it out of bounds. We got a timeout on the floor. Hot start for the Aggies as they run off a 10 to 2 lead. But Arizona has steadied the ship. We're tied at 12 early in the ballgame. December 3rd this coming Saturday when they face the Utah State Aggies at 1.30 p.m. For more information, visit nmstatesports.com. Wildcats with a little comeback here in the first five minutes. Nick Johnson came off the bench, seemed to steady the ship for the Wildcats. Well, they do, and part of that credit has to go to uh, number 11 or number 13. I'm sorry, Nick Johnson right there who you see. Take a look at what he's done coming in off the bench. He's a great-looking freshman, uh, and, and just, again, Look at the speed here, because coming across the middle with an angle, that's not a bad play. Here's Tyrone Watson. He's not a slow player, and watch how Johnson just goes by him, Jeff. 10 to 2 Arizona run over the last 147 of this basketball game, and we are tied at 12. Hot shooting by both teams. Here, turnover there. Bill comes out of there with the basketball. Backdoor cut. Johnson can really sky, but he lost it, and it goes to Bon Jesse. And the Aggies have it. Game's knotted at 12. Nice look to Watson. New Mexico State by two as Ty Watson gets the bunny after the penetration by the Aggie guards. And getting to the basket is Josiah Turner for the University of Arizona. Another fine freshman in the backcourt. He's from Sacramento. 6-3 freshman with one double-figure game to his credit at 10 against San Diego State in their last home game. Well, they may have lost Eric Williams, but don't feel too bad for Sean Miller with the class he's got in. Mullins to Cabango. Uh, on top to Banjo C. C tries to get it in into Poway. He's checked into the game. McKinnis comes back. LaRoche comes in. And for Arizona, Fogg returns. As you see, Solomon Hill on your screen. And there's Watson going to the bench along with Cabongo. So LaRoche will handle the point now. With Napoli, C, McKinnis, and Mullings on the floor with him. And McKinnis is wide open again. Napoli with the tip. Nice position. He's a big guy to get around, isn't he? He is. Joey, a 6'10 sophomore, shook my hand before the game. It disappeared uh -huh. quickly. Maggie stay with the man to man. Fogg with the penetration, kicks to Parham. He'll launch the three. Off the front of the rim, no good. A rebound. Ripped down by Napawe. Aggies want to run. That's C for three. Little long. Big box out by Arizona. Chol, another freshman for Arizona, had the rebound there. They are young. Well, again, that goes back to the identity we talked about earlier. Chol goes baseline and a hold against New Mexico State. You mentioned the hand of Chalitzi Napoli. I, I equate it to someone grabbing my hand with a first baseman slot. Wendell McKinnis picks up the foul. That's the first against Wendell, second against the Aggies. There's a good look at Perry, the leading rebounder for Arizona. Now Katz looking to get it in. Parham will get it out to the perimeter to Turner. They got a fresh shot clock out of it. Aggies playing zone off the inbound. Spog off the screen for three, missed it. The rebound to Bon Jesse. Aggies pushing it. Well, they'd like to make it attractive. LaRoche circles it back out after Arizona got back on defense. 
right corner, Molin is off to LaRoche. And the man defense for Arizona, McKinnis, head fakes, drives, collision, draws a foul against the freshman Turner. Jeff, I was out here about 4 o'clock, and by, at 4.30, Tony Delph, the assistant coach, was on the floor working for a good hour with Wendell McKinnis on that move. And I'm telling you, the number of shots that were going in were unbelievable. First foul on Turner, second against Arizona. McKinnis working inside against Perry. Turnaround jumpers off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound yanked down by Perry, gives it off to Turner, and here come the Wildcats, down two with the basketball. That's Parham, off balance, he traveled. A little skip in there, then he got his shot rejected to boot. Parham, a junior from the Bronx, New York. Welcome to the Pan American Center. Arizona hadn't been here since 1971. In 1971, the Aggies won it 89 to 73. The last Arizona win in this building was in 1963. Little long battle on the board. It goes out of bounds. It belongs to Arizona. Timeout on the floor. New Mexico State 16. And Arizona 14 as we hit the under 12 break. Good start for the Aggies at home against the Pac 12's Wild. University of Arizona against current WAC members, 75 and 48, a winning percentage of 610. So they've kind of had their way with WAC teams. And that's against the current. Whack one, of, members now. one of the keys to the game we talked about was who's going to own the boards. Right now it's pretty even. 9-8, the Aggies with a one-rebound lead. And oddly, a two-point lead on the scoreboard. One of those big ones was a nice offensive rebound by uh, Chalitzi Napali to put it back in. Aggies two of six from the three-point line, while Arizona's one of five from the three-point line. Both teams have made six field goals in the game. Still court pressure. The ball is made and a steal for Bon Jesse. Good hustle. Returned by McKinnis, but you know he's going to hustle. Cabongo to the rack. Draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. The Aggies two for two at the free throw line, while the Wildcats one for one from the charity track. All right, I'm going to give Christian some grief. Talked to him uh, before the game, and I said, "Guy, your arms are looking tired after all the free throws you shot up in the last game." He says, "Well, I'm getting bruises, but quit driving, and you won't have this." He says, "No, I'll go to the line." Solomon Hill picks up his second personal foul, third against the Wildcats. The Bongo misses the free throw where he has been. Outstanding. Uh, spectacular, not outstanding. I mean, spectacular. 92% on the year, 46 for 50. And against Southern Miss, he went 15 for 15 at the line. He gives the Yankees a three point lead here. 11 40 remains to be played in the first half. Keeping in mind he's a sophomore, I'm going to talk about free throws historically for career here in a second. The Aggies are trapping. Johnson gets out of the trap, kicks right side, right corner three is airborne and a little off. Hill battles for the rebound. That reminded me of Wendell McKinnis. Well, and he was going up against Ernst LaRoche. Couple inches difference there, don't you think? Yep. Good hustle by Hill considering he had two fouls as well. Risking a third, but got the rebound in the putback. Points for Hill, left corner, LaRoche attacks. Floater good. He's got the floater going tonight, isn't he? Aggies by three. Wildcats beat the press. Freshman Johnson gives it off to Solomon Hill, the junior. Fogg backs it out to the center circle, working on Cabanga. McKinnis helps. That leaves Hill open top of the circle, and he drains it. Hill, a 25% three-point shooter, made a pair. Didn't make the switch on defense. They should have switched players and gone out on top, but didn't happen. That left him wide open. Knocks it up at 19. McKinnis from the perimeter leaves it a little short. Rebound to Mays. Two-on-one. Yeah, three-on-one, as he mentioned. Hill. 
Johnson left wide open, squares up and drains it. He's a 42% three-point shooter, and the Wildcats have taken the lead, and Marvin Menzies takes the timeout. Talking to Hamadou Rahman right now. 10.02 to play in the half, Arizona 22, and New Mexico State 19. We were talking about the free throws of Christian Cabango. And real quick, Jeff, I want to mention, on his career now, he has 132 free throws, 178 made. The record for New Mexico State is 287 made at 404, so his sophomore's not even in, and he's already halfway there. Can't get enough of video of your favorite New Mexico State athletics teams, and you need to visit Aggie Vision's YouTube channel. We're uploading more game highlights and interviews every week. Visit youtube.com slash AggieVision. Arizona by three. I want to remind everyone, football game Saturday, 1.30. Come on out, support the 80s. They've had a wonderful season looking for win number five. Been a long time since we could say that. Arizona enjoys the lead for the first time in this ball game. And Marvin Menzies quickly got the time. Lavender's into the game on defense there for the University of Arizona. Sean Miller calls Lavender the team's best outside shooter. Why put Nick backs up there too? Nick Johnson showed he can shoot it. 12 on the shot clock. Cabongo takes it to the center circle and drives on Lavender. Kicks. But Mullins was leaving the vicinity as the ball arrived, and it goes into the Arizona bench. Checking into the game now is Kirill Natyasko. He's from the Ukraine. He started primarily this year, but they bring him off the bench tonight. 6'11", junior. This is the third starting lineup they've used this year. Sophomore Mays, left hands it across, feeds it inside, Perry in the paint. Big guy from the corner hits. That's a two-point bucket. And the Wildcats by five. He and Rahman going at it inside now. They go inside to Rahman. And a foul call against Natyazko. The Ukrainian quickly picks up a foul after draining a bucket on the other end. By the way, he's from... Nico Petra. I had to practice that a lot, so I wanted to say. Yeah, I was going to say, easy for you to say. Yeah, he's a Ukrainian. Not going to try it again. Yeah, don't blame me. a big point. I do give you brownie points for practicing and getting it on and doing it right. Mullings to Watson, head fakes, takes it up, can't get it to go. Rebound by Raman, step on ball. And Perry clears the glass for Arizona, and that's what he does best. I like the hustle of Mullings getting there and mixing it up. Arizona by five. They've left Mays wide open, and he drains it. He's a 40% three-point shooter. NMSU having trouble keeping up with the speed on the movement of the ball and the man-to-man. Cabongo stripped of the ball. Matyazko outlets to Lavender. And driving to the hoop, Johnson, but he slams it off the front of the rim. Ball goes out of bounds. Aggie basketball. I mentioned he was a good outside shooter. He should have taken it back out about 18 feet and popped it. He get ribbed a little bit here after that effort. Oh, that's a long bus ride home to get ribbed on that one. He's got a smile on his face now. Wildcats by eight. Johnson on Watson. He missed the bunny earlier. Mullings goes inside to McKinnis, who draws a double team. Mullings to the rack, off the glass. Napawi muscles it up and in. He's fouled. It counts. He'll go to the line. Cuts it to six. Watch his rebound. That's two big boys right there. Well, again, I like that hustle by Mullings. Then you've got the uh, sophomore Napawi in there making it. Chile, a 70% free throw shooter on the year. Trying to complete the old fashioned three point play. And he does. 
two-point play ended a 10-3 uh, run by Arizona. Aggies press off the main free throw. Perry. He gives it off to Turner. Right corner to Lavender. And another one for Nayatsko. Not a lot of lift, but very smooth shot. 29-22. The Wildcats with the lead. They were down eight early. McKinnis left wide open. He'll launch. He'll hit. Wendell McKinnis has three three-pointers in the first half. And it's a four-point game in the Pan American Center. Huge student turnout for the Aggies tonight. They're behind each basket. It's a rare event when Arizona comes to town. Turner to the basket. Draws the foul on Napawi, and he'll go to the free throw line. You know, early Napawi was getting into foul trouble very quickly, and he's really cut that down, Jeff. So Napawi picks up his first personal foul, third against the Aggies. Arizona by four. Only attempted. 127, huge advantage there, Glenn. Well, the advantage is 84 points over the first six games, Jeff, and that's monstrous. Why don't we again remind everyone, the Aggie football team finishes out the season Saturday at 1.30. Great news. Children's tickets, 12 and under, just $5. Make it a family affair. Come on out, enjoy the game between the Utah State Aggies and your New Mexico State Aggies. Last game, chance for that fifth win. That'd be a big one for Dwayne Walker and his squad. Turner, a 75% free throw shooter, misses the front end. Freshman from Sacramento, season high 10 points in their last outing against San Diego State, a 61-57 loss. And he misses them both. So it's still a four-point Arizona lead. And the Yankees have ownership of the basketball against the man-to-man. -man. The Rose looking for Napawe instead goes to Cabongo up top. Cabongo out to LaRoche for a three. Front of the rim, no good. Napawe with the rebound. And he draws a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. That's not necessarily bad. Napawe's always been a pretty good free throw shooter. For a man his size, he knows how to shoot it. Shooting 67% right now. Powell goes against the 6'9 freshman Chole, number 30 there. Runs a hip into him a little bit. 14 minutes a game. Chole earns this year on the floor for John Miller's Wildcats. The Powell hits the free throw. Yeah, we talked about free throws already. Five and six for the Yankees, just one of three for the Wildcats. So both teams have had good runs in this game. Right now it's a Arizona lead as Napawe couldn't get the second to go. Fog for three. Watson clears the rebound. Watson to the basket. Kicks out right corner. Marash back into Watson. Throws it away. That's Solomon Hill in there. No look pass to Chole. Let's a defender go by and lays it up and in. Again, quickly down the court with Chole, and he got the easy basket. Arizona by five as we hit the six minute mark. Aggies with their fourth turnover last possession. Arizona has three turnovers in the game. LaRoche will try for three. A little more arc this time. Still didn't get it to go. They keep it alive. Cabongo. He covers the loose ball. And the Yankees have a fresh shot clock. They are letting them play right now. The low scoring shows that, so they've got to keep that effort up. There you see the Arizona huddle, the New Mexico State huddle. And let's take a look at the New Mexico State starting lineup. It's the usual. Christian Cabongo, point guard Ernst LaRoche, leading scorer and leading uh, rebounder Wendell McKinnis. Hamadou Rahman and Ty Watson, the starting five for Marvin Menzies' group tonight. For the Wildcats, it's Turner, Mays, Fogg, 
Perry, who's their leading rebounder, and Solomon Hill, who's the leading scorer for the Wildcats, Glenn. Yeah, and, and Jeff, the, the Arizona Wildcats are a team searching for an identity right now. You lose a player the quality of, of Derek Williams, and, and you're going to have a hole to fill. And we were talking to some of the folks, as you see Christian Convongo with uh, Coach Menzies and his record, but they, they, they need to step it up. Each one of the players needs to do what they do, not try to be a Derek Williams. Marvin Menzies in his fifth season. And the head coach at Arizona, Sean Miller. Miller in there somewhere. That's He's in his third season. 50 and 25, Glenn. That's not bad. They won the Pac-12 last year in his second year. No, I mean, and even more impressive from his years at Xavier. It's his eighth year in coaching, and he's 170 and 72. So that gives you an indication of the caliber of coach that he is. There's a reason Arizona went to get him. So Sean Miller takes his Wildcats on the there road. He is to the Pan American Center, getting to know the foe, the Arizona Wildcats University founded back in 1885, enrollment south of 40,000. McHale Center, their home, terrific home court advantage for the Wildcats. They're in the Pac-12, they won it a year ago, and their notable alumni, the creator of Sesame Street, Joan Gans Cooney. I get to work with Big Bird, how good is that? <laughs> Outstanding officiating crew here tonight. Well, let's wait on that. As we get ready to tip it off here, there's a good look at Watson. Ramon, meanwhile, goes up after it for New Mexico State, and the Aggies control the tip. And New Mexico State will get first crack at it. Arizona shook up their starting lineup a little bit, took the big guy out of the middle. And Ramon fumbles it out on the perimeter. Watson keeps it alive. They go inside to Ramon to the basket, scoops and scores. Jeff, that's what I like to see. They work the offense. Yeah, the roach was open, but he didn't take the shot. He got it underneath. Aggies are pressing. Turnover. McKinnis to the basket. He missed. LaRoche's tip won't fall. Wendell goes up. He draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. Aggies go pressing after the first make. Going to go against Solomon Hill. Well, we talked about uh, Ernst LaRoche on the offense, but his defense has been very good as well. He's can uh, steal the ball, averaging over one steal a game. McKinnis, a 67% free throw shooter. Free throws will be a key to the game tonight as well. New Mexico State's taking so many free throws this year because they're uh, pounding it inside. Got the big guys getting to the foul line a lot. And they're going to have to make those freebies. It's amazing the advantage they have in free throws, and I'll get to that in a second, Jeff. 4 nothing Aggies. And New Mexico State will press. That's Solomon Hill bringing it up. And the officials in the bottom right-hand corner. That is a final four type group. Hill finds Perry alone for the slam dunk underneath Jesse Perry. NCAA West Regional All-Turning Team for the Wildcats in the NCAA Tournament. Ten and a half points a game. Glenn slams it home, and it's a two-point game. And some good patience by the Wildcat offense. Watson skips it along the baseline to LaRoche. Penetrates, kicks. McKinnis is open top of the circle. That's a three-pointer for Wendell McKinnis. Wendell, 37% out at the uh, three-point line for the Aggies in New Mexico State with a great start. Bringing it up is Mays. Working against LaRoche. Man-to-man -man defense for New Mexico State. And on the right side, Fogg. We highlighted him in the open. His shot might have been changed by McKinnis. I think he might have got a little bit of that. Here come the Aggies. Cabongo to the basket. Tried to dump it to McKinnis. Wendell comes up with it anyway, takes it outside the arc, and he hits. Wendell McKinnis already has eight. Aggies ten, Wildcats two, and the Wildcats have to take the timeout. Great start. You couldn't draw it up any better for the Mexico State. And, and Jeff, you know what? This is the exact same nightmare that the Arizona Wildcats did not want to see. This is what happened against San Diego State, and it's what happened to them in New York, is they got off to a very, very slow start, or their opponent got off to a fast start. Either way, it's not what they wanted to see, to fall behind on the road. This is their first game on the road. 
And uh, again, the other two were at a neutral site. And you can see the series history, somewhat deceptive. Uh, Wildcats won big last year in uh, Tucson. And one of the big reasons for that, we mentioned him already, Derek Williams, 27 points and 14 rebounds in that win. But I guarantee you, Sean Miller had warned them, we can't fall behind early. A lot of time left, Jeff, but you don't want to fall behind early. Aggies to continue the press. Nick Johnson has checked into the game for Arizona. He handles the basketball now with a 6'2 freshman. freshman from Gilbert, Arizona, hometown boy practically, just up the road in the Phoenix area. Bill kicks to Johnson. Aggies with that pressure defense. That's Kyle Fogg. Left side hill, left wide open, but he missed it. Wildcats shoot 35% out there. Cabongo top of the circle. Leaves it for McKinnis going to the basket. And good interior defense by the Wildcats. Hill wants to run. Kicks left corner. Fog for three. Big bucket for the University of Arizona. As Fog, 39% from beyond the arc. He averages 11 and a half a game for the Wildcats. Aggies by five. LaRoche. Nice quarter. Dunk on the other end for Nick Johnson, the freshman. He has three double-figure games this year. At 10 points, seven rebounds against their last opponent, San Diego State, a loss for the University of Arizona. LaRoche lost it, tips it over left side to Bongo. Circles the rim, rebound pulled down by Perry, who's their leading rebounder, at about nine rebounds a game. Johnson missed, Perry gets the rebound left corner. Perry drives, working on Raman. Missed the bunny. Rebound to McKinnis. Two on four for the Aggies. LaRoche will slow it up. Trailing is Watson. Gets into the paint and misses badly. Nice move, but he didn't finish. And he got hit on the transition. Going to the basket is Hill. He scores. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. Right now, Jeff, the Wildcats are getting down the floor much, much quicker than the Aggies are in creating those open shots on the transition. And there you see Watson with the whack on the way to the basket for Hill. 12 to 9, Arizona survives the Aggie hot start. I want to welcome uh, two relatively new uh, groups watching tonight's game. I'd like to welcome everybody in Arizona watching at home there and also want to welcome KBIA and they'll be broadcasting the games on one of their sub channels for the rest of the year as well. Welcome to the wonderful confines of the Pan American Center. Free throw good by Hill. And that makes it a two point game. The Mexico State 12, University of Arizona 10. Arizona 4 and 2 on the year. They were a preseason top 25 team, but two losses in a row have knocked them out of the polls. Cabongo leaves it a little short. Rebound yanked down by Parham, who's checked in. Ahead to Johnson. Johnson to the rack, reverse, pretty move. Got some speed there, too. Absolutely. So Johnson certainly gave him a lift off the bench, Glenn. And we're all tied at 12. Mullings has checked in for New Mexico State. Wearing 23 underneath the basket. Top of your screen. That's him with the ball there. Cabongo will reset now with 17 on the shot clock. Aggie's going with a shorter lineup now. And on top, Watson will penetrate. Kicks left corner for Banjasi, and he fumbles it out of bounds. We got a timeout on the floor. Hot start for the Aggies as they run off a 10 to 2 lead. But Arizona has steadied the ship. We're tied at 12 early in the ball game. Dinner at my place? That sounds great. Seven o'clock? That'll be perfect. Hi, I'm in a bit of a hurry and I need to refurnish my apartment fast. No problem. AFW is their one-stop shop for everything you'll need. Do I have to assemble it? I don't have time for that. No assembly required. Thank you. Hi, Katie. You're early. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Come on in. Wow, you have a really nice place. Thanks. Since 1961, 
Dino's Italian Food has been serving the best Italian food to four generations of Coloradans. Dino's has a great selection of your favorites and is reasonably priced. For the holidays, try Dino's Famous Pies. Visit Dino's for great happy hour specials in our remodeled bar. Dino's is located at 10040 West Colfax in Lakewood. For more information, call 303-238-7393. Happy holidays from Dino's Italian Food. Hey, I'm Chicago Zeke. Times are tough. Invest in yourself. Come to Celebrity Tattoo. Come down to Celebrity Tattoo. New Mexico State football has one final home game of the season, Saturday, December 3rd, this coming Saturday, when they face the Utah State Aggies at 1.30 p.m. For more information, visit nmstatesports.com. Wildcats with a little comeback here in the first five minutes. Nick Johnson came off the bench, seemed to steady the ship for the Wildcats. Well, they do, and part of that credit has to go to uh, number 11, or number 13, I'm sorry, Nick Johnson right there, who you see. Take a look at what he's done coming in off the bench. He's a great-looking freshman, uh, and, and just, again, look at the speed here, because coming across the middle with an angle, that's not a bad play. Here's Tyrone Watson. He's not a slow player, and watch how Johnson just goes by him, Jeff. 10-2 Arizona run over the last 147 of this basketball game, and we are tied at 12. Hot shooting by both teams. Here, turnover there. Hill comes out of there with the basketball. Backdoor cut. Johnson can really sky, but he lost it, and it goes to Bon Jesse. And the Aggies have it. Game's knotted at 12. Nice look to Watson. New Mexico State by two as Ty Watson gets the bunny after the penetration by the Aggie guards. And getting to the basket is Josiah Turner for the University of Arizona. Another fine freshman in the backcourt. He's from Sacramento. 6'3 freshman with one double-figure game to his credit at 10 against San Diego State in their last home game. Uh, they may have lost Garrett Williams, but don't feel too bad for Sean Miller at the class he's got in. Mullins to Cabango on top to Bon Jesse. C tries to get it into the Poway who's checked into the game. McKinnis comes back, LaRoche comes in. And for Arizona, Fogg returns as you see Solomon Hill on your screen. And there's Watson going to the bench along with Cabango. So LaRoche will handle the point now. With Napali, C, McKinnis, and Mullings on the floor with him. And McKinnis is wide open again. Napali with the tip. Nice position. He's a big guy to get around, isn't he? He is. Joey, a 6'10 sophomore, shook my hand before the game. It disappeared uh -huh. quickly. Aggie stay with the man to man. Fogg with the penetration, kicks to Parham. He'll launch the three off the front of the rim, no good. A rebound, ripped down by Napawe. Aggies want to run. That's C for three. Little long. Big box out by Arizona. Chole, another freshman for Arizona, had the rebound there. They are young. Well, again, that goes back to the identity we talked about earlier. Joel goes baseline and a hold against New Mexico State. You mentioned the hand of Chalitzi Napoli. I, I equate it to someone grabbing my hand with a first baseman's glove. Wendell McKinnis picks up the foul. That's the first against Wendell, second against the Aggies. There's a good look at Perry, the leading rebounder for Arizona. Now Katz looking to get it in. Parham will get it out to the perimeter to Turner. And got a fresh shot clock out of it. Aggies playing zone off the inbounds. Fogg off the screen for three, missed it. The rebound to Bon Jesse. Aggies pushing it. Well, they'd like to make it attractive. 
LaRoe circles it back down after Arizona got back on defense. Right corner, Mullings off to LaRoche. And the man defense for Arizona, McKinnis, head fakes, drives, collision, draws a foul against the freshman Turner. Jeff, I was out here about 4 o'clock, and by, at 4.30, Tony Delk, the assistant coach, was on the floor working for a good hour with Wendell McKinnis on that move. And I'm telling you, the number of shots that were going in were unbelievable. First foul on Turner, second against Arizona. Kennis working inside against Perry. Turnaround jumpers off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound yanked down by Perry, gives it off to Turner, and here come the Wildcats, down two with the basketball. That's Perham, off balance, he traveled. Little skip in there, then he got his shot rejected to boot. Perham, a junior from the Bronx, New York. Welcome to the Pan American Center. Arizona hadn't been here since 1971. In 1971, the Aggies won it 89-73. The last Arizona win in this building was in 1963. Little long. Battle on the board. It goes out of bounds. It belongs to Arizona. Timeout on the floor. New Mexico State 16. And Arizona 14 as we hit the under 12 break. Good start for the Aggies at home against the Pac 12's Wildcats. The Las Cruces Sun News. It's where you live. Each and every day, we bring you more about your world. More pictures, more stories, more events, and more of the people who are part of life right here in all of southern New Mexico. Local news from your community and around the world. Sports, business, entertainment, classifieds, and lots more. The Sun News. More information you can use every day. Visit us online at lcsun-news.com. The Sun News. It's where you live. Are you in the market for a vehicle? Head over to Danny Gamboa's Casa de Autos. Casa de Autos sells quality vehicles following three steps. They certify their vehicles through a 40-point inspection service. They own the bank, so financing is easy. After you purchase your vehicle from Casa de Autos, they'll continue to help you. Customers of Casa de Autos have been happy for the last 33 years. So come down to Casa de Autos, enjoy your experience, and find what you've been looking for. Casa de Autos is located in the big yellow building on Amador, five blocks south of Solano. The excitement and anticipation of live racing is back at Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino. Be there as the 2011-2012 live thoroughbred and quarter horse racing season kicks out of the gate on Tuesday, December 6th. Watch as these amazing athletes compete in the 53rd season of live racing every Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Post time is 12.25 p.m. and this season is sure to be thrilling. Live thoroughbred and quarter horse racing is back better than ever. Only at Sunland Park Racetrack and Casino. New Mexico State Basketball on Aggie Vision is presented by El Paso Electric. Comcast. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo and you, together, will go far. And by Casa de Autos. University of Arizona against current WAC members, 75 and 48, a winning percentage of... 6-10, so they've kind of had their way with WAC teams. And that's against the current WAC the, members now. One of the keys to the game we talked about was who's going to own the boards. Right now it's pretty even. 9-8, the Aggies with a one-rebound lead, and oddly a two-point lead on the scoreboard. One of those big ones was a nice offensive rebound by uh, Chalice Napawi to put it back in. Aggies two of six from the three-point line, while Arizona's one of five from the three-point line. Both teams have made six field goals in the game. So quick pressure. And handling the ball is made, and a steal for Bonjasi. Good hustle. Returned by McKinnis, but you know he's going to hustle. Cabongo to the rack. Draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. The Aggies two for two at the free throw line. While the Wildcats one for one for the charity track. All right, I'm going to give Christian some grief. Talked to him uh, before the game, and I said, God, your arms are looking tired after all the free throws you shot up in the last. And he says, well, I'm getting bruises. But quit driving, and you won't have this. He says, no, I'll go to the line. 
Solomon Hill picks up his second personal foul, third against the Wildcats. DeBongo misses the free throw where he has been outstanding. Spectacular, not outstanding. I mean, spectacular. 92% on the year, 46 for 50. And against Southern Miss, he went 15 for 15 at the line. He gives the Aggies a three-point lead here. 11.40 remains to be played in the first half. Keeping in mind he's a sophomore, I'm going to talk about free throws historically for career here in a second. Aggies are trapping. Johnson gets out of the trap, kicks right side, right corner three is airborne and a little off. Hill battles for the rebound. That reminded me of Wendell McGinnis. Well, and he was going up against Ernst LaRoche. A couple inches difference there, don't you think? Yep. Good hustle by Hill, considering he had two fouls as well. Risking a third, but got the rebound and the putback. Five points for Hill, left corner LaRoche attacks. Floater good. He's got the floater going tonight, doesn't he? Aggies by three. Wildcats beat the press. Freshman Johnson gives it off to Solomon Hill, the junior. Fogg backs it out to the center circle, working on Cabanga. McKinnis helps. That leaves Hill open top of the circle, and he drains it. Hill, a 25% three-point shooter, made a pair. Didn't make the switch on defense. They should have switched players and gone out on top, but didn't happen. That's left and wide open. Knocks it up at 19. McKinnis from the perimeter leaves it a little short. Rebound to Mays. Two yeah. on one. Yeah, three on one, as he mentioned. Hill. Johnson left wide open, squares up, and drains it. He's a 42% three-point shooter in the Wildcats. Have taken the lead, and Marvin Menzies takes the time out. Talking to Hamadou Rahman right now. 10.02 to play in the half, Arizona 22, and New Mexico State 19. We were talking about the free throws of Christian Cabango. And real quick, Jeff, I want to mention, on his career now, he has 132 free throws, 178 made. The record for New Mexico State is 287 made at 404, so his sophomore's not even in, and he's already halfway there. Can't get enough of video of your favorite New Mexico State athletics teams, and you need to visit Aggie Vision's YouTube channel. We're uploading more game highlights and interviews every week. Visit youtube.com slash Aggie Vision. Arizona by three. I want to remind everyone, football game Saturday, 1.30. Come on out, support the 80s. They've had a wonderful season looking for win number five. Been a long time since we could say that. Arizona enjoys the lead for the first time in this ball game. And Marvin Menzies quickly got the time. Lavender's into the game on defense there for the University of Arizona. Sean Miller calls Lavender the team's best outside shooter. I'll put Nick back up there too. Nick Johnson showing he can shoot it. 12 on the shot clock. Cabango takes it to the center circle and drives on Lavender. Kicks. But Mullins was leaving the vicinity as the ball arrived, and it goes into the Arizona bench. Checking into the game now is Kirill Natyasko. He's from the Ukraine. He started primarily this year, but they bring him off the bench tonight. 6'11", junior. This is their third starting lineup they've used this year. Sophomore Mays, left hands it across, feeds it inside, Perry in the paint. Big guy from the corner hits. That's a two-point bucket. And the Wildcats by five. Ian Rahman going at it inside now. They go inside to Rahman. And a foul call against Natyazko. The Ukrainian quickly picks up a foul after draining a bucket on the other end. By the way, he's from... Nifo I had to practice that a lot, so I wanted to say it. Yeah, I was going to say, easy for you to say. Yeah, he's Ukrainian. Not going to try it again. Yeah, I don't believe it. But it's big point. I do give you brownie points for practicing and getting it on and doing it right. 
Mullings to Watson, head fakes, takes it up, can't get it to go. Rebound by Raman, stiff on ball. And Perry clears the glass for Arizona, and that's what he does best. I like the hustle of Mullins getting there and mixing it up. Arizona by five. They've left Mays wide open, and he drains it. He's a 40% three-point shooter. NMSU having trouble keeping up with the speed on the movement of the ball and the man-to-man. Cabongo stripped of the ball. Matyazko outlets to Lavender. And driving to the hoop, Johnson, but he slams it off the front of the rim. Ball goes out of bounds. Aggie basketball. I mentioned he was a good outside shooter. He should have taken it back out about 18 feet and popped it. He get ribbed a little bit here after that effort. Oh, that's a long bus ride home to get ribbed on that one. He's got a smile on his face now. Wildcats by eight. Johnson on Watson. He missed the bunny early. Mullings goes inside to McKinnis, who draws a double team. Mullings to the rack. Off the glass. Napawi muscles it up and in. He's fouled. It counts. He'll go to the line. Cuts it to six. Watch this rebound. That's two big boys right there. Well, again, I like that hustle by Mullins. Then you've got the uh, sophomore Napawi in there making it. Chile, a 70% free throw shooter on the year. Trying to complete the old fashioned three point play. And he does. That three point play ended a 10 uh, 3 run by Arizona. Aggies press off the main free throw. Perry. He gives it off to Turner, right corner to Lavender. For Nayatsko. Not a lot of lift, but very smooth shot. 29 22. The Wildcats with the lead. They were down eight early. McKinnis left wide open. He'll watch. He'll hit. Wendell McKinnis has three three pointers in the first half. And it's a four point game in the Pan American Center. Huge student. Turnout for the Aggies tonight. They're behind each basket. It's a rare event when Arizona comes to town. Turner to the basket. Draws the foul on Napawe, and he'll go to the free throw line. You know, early Napawe was getting into foul trouble very quickly, and he's really cut that down for us. So Napawe picks up his first personal foul, third against the Aggies. Arizona by four. Your way at Groove Subaru. Want to know what it feels like to buy a car unconcerned? At Groove Subaru, you get four days, 200 miles, no question return. With our Clearway menu, you get upfront pricing that's easy to understand. Subaru, share the love event going on now. Your way at Groove Subaru. Dish Network claims to be a better value than DirecTV. But did you know that their Top 120 package includes 31 music stations and dozens of TV channels you've probably never even heard of? So why does Dish call it America's Top 120 if you only get a few decent TV channels? With DirecTV's Choice Package, you get the highest rated channels with your favorite shows. The best channels for the best price. Another reason 30 million people agree. Don't just watch TV. DirecTV. This land's our livelihood. It's our legacy. We are America's farmers. We use technology to manage our resources. It's important that we become more efficient because they're not making any more land. Who cares for the land? We do. We are America's farm families. Brought to you on behalf of America's farmers by Monsanto. Former Colorado quarterbacks Charles Johnson, Joel Klatt, and host Maya Starks as they dissect CU football with game reviews, previews, stats, and analyze all things black and gold. The Altitude Sports Summit, Black and Gold Edition, premiering new episodes every Wednesday at 5, only on Altitude. 
Arizona 29, New Mexico State 25. One of the things this Aggie basketball team has been doing has been getting to the free throw line. The Aggies have attempted 249 free throws this year while making 170. The opponents have only attempted 127. Huge advantage there, Glenn. Well, the advantage is 84 points over the first six games, Jeff, and that's monstrous. I want to again remind everyone, the AD football team finishes out the season Saturday at 1.30. Great news. Children's tickets, 12 and under, just $5. Make it a family affair. Come on out, enjoy the game between the Utah State Aggies and your New Mexico State Aggies. Last game, chance for that fifth win. That'd be a big one for Dwayne Walker and his squad. Turner, a 75% free throw shooter, misses the front end. Freshman from Sacramento, season high 10 points in their last outing against San Diego State, a 61-57 loss. And he misses them both. So it's still a four-point Arizona lead. And the Aggies have ownership of the basketball against the man-to-man. The Rose looking for Napawe instead goes to Cabongo up top. Cabongo out to LaRoche for a three from the rim. No good. Napawe with the rebound and he draws a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. That's not necessarily bad. Napawe's uh, always been a pretty good free throw shooter. For a man his size, he knows how to shoot it. Shooting 67% right now. Foul goes against the 6'9 freshman Chol, number 30 there. Runs a hip into him a little bit. 14 minutes a game. Joel earns this year on the floor for John Miller's Wildcats. Napoli hits the free throw. Yeah, we talked about free throws already. Five and six for the Aggies, just one of three for the Wildcats. So both teams have had good runs in this game. Right now it's a Arizona lead as Napoli couldn't get the second to go. for three. Watson clears the rebound. Watson to the basket. Kicks out right corner. Marash back into Watson. Throws it away. That's Solomon Hill in there. No look pass to Choll. Let's a defender go by and lays it up and in. Again, quickly down the court with Choll and he got the easy basket. Arizona by five as we hit the six-minute mark. The Aggies with their fourth turnover last possession. Arizona has three turnovers in the game. LaRoche will try for three. A little more arc this time. Still didn't get it to go. They keep it alive. Cabongo covers the loose ball. And the Aggies have a fresh shot clock. They are letting a play right now. Cabongo was fouled. Chole got the ball. And it'll be a two-shot foul. Once again, going to the line. Trevisi Napoli getting ready to check in. So Cabongo, the 6'4 sophomore at the free throw line. Point in the game came from the line, of course, and there's a little on here, so he's one for three tonight. I told you his arms were tired from those 30 cent free throws he took uh, over the holiday. I thought you were going to say from the flight from Alaska. <laughs> Aggies just got back on Sunday while Arizona was getting ready for New Mexico State all week in Tucson, and presumably watching them on TV and scouting them while they were resting up for this. Watson had to steal and he's pleading his case, but they're going to make him throw it in again. Aggies are pressing down four. Fog against Cabongo. Wildcats have committed seven fouls, so the Aggies are in the bonus. And it knows he's only committed three fouls. They can afford to be real well, aggressive here if they want. Four fouls now. They just got a little aggressive. See Christian reaching in and holding him off a little bit there. Looking for the pick from Raman. Marvin Menzies. Looking as composed and dapper as ever. 
Carter brings it up, gets a screen, splits the difference, stops, shoots over Watson, and hits. Nice shot. I think Watson got a piece of that, did you? I did, too. I did, too, but he got enough on it to get it in there. Maybe he was going to use the glass, and the deflection made it go right through. There's some muscle for you. Raman can't get it to go, though. Rebound to Bonjasi. He can get it to go. That's his first hoop. And it's a four-point game. Bonjasi had a couple of good games up in Alaska. Perry left alone as Raman challenged out top. C ties him up, jump ball. Jeff, I love that play. It's an old-fashioned pick and roll. Didn't make the switch, and Chol found himself all alone under the basket. Fortunately, some good defense on the other side by Bon C tied him up. Here's a look at it. Mullings in, LaRoche is out and on the Aggie bench. Aggie's in a zone off the inbound. 17 on the shot clock. Wendell quickly off the bench. Bog for three. It's off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound to Cabongo as you saw the shooting flashed up on your screen. 56% now for Arizona. The Aggies shooting 37%. Cabongo kicks. Mullings from the perimeter. Soft touch wouldn't go for him. Rebound to Turner. Turner relentless going to the basket. Hill on the perimeter. Fog top of the circle. And a foul at the top of the circle against New Mexico State. Wildcats aren't in the bonus, so they'll be throwing it in here. Wendell McKinnis got off the bench as soon as the ball was put in play, and he's been sitting over there. I don't think Marvin Menzies liked the matchup he had on the floor with the players that uh, Coach Miller had. Wildcats by four with the basketball as we hit the four-minute mark. Hill has eight to lead Arizona. That's Perry. He drains it. Everybody getting in the act on the three-point shooting for Arizona. Babies are getting killed on that switch. Seven-point Wildcat lead. Arizona 5 of 12 from beyond the three-point line now. The Yankees are 3 of 9 out in three-point land. Mullings shovels it off to Cabongo to the rack. Reverse. Couldn't get it to go. McTennis. Is that just a great illustration of Wendell McKinnis' heart? Nick Johnson spins it up and in. Use some English on the ball. What a move by the freshman. But again, quickly down court and they get the easy shot. That's Cabongo driving. Couldn't get it to go. Rebound pulled down by Turner. Stolen back by Mullins, the Aggie freshman. Cabongo, three on two to Mullings. Nice look to Raman. He scores. He's fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Good look by Mullings. So As he Raman, was able to find the open man. Raman with a chance for a three-point play. When we come back, watch Raman finish underneath. Wildcats by five, 248 to play in the half. We are Pioneer Bank, and we protect what matters most. Serving your financial needs since 1901, we know there is much more to life than managing your money. That's why we provide an array of products, including completely free checking accounts. Whether it's for personal or business, Pioneer Bank has the banking products and services you need. Pioneer Bank, community banking at its best. Everybody's got a bug for this. There's a saying that time is a great storyteller. 
Well then, here's to the next chapter. So stand with me, brothers, and raise them high. Because as great as this is, there's even more ahead of us. And the only question is... New Mexico State women's basketball is on the road until Monday, December 19th, when they square off against the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara. Tip-off set for 7.30. Fans can attend the game for free if they go to the men's game beforehand. Tip-off for that game is 5 p.m. For more information, visit nmstatesports.com. Arizona 38, New Mexico State 33, 2.48 to play in the half. As you see some of the Aggie students that have made it out to the Pan American Center. One of the better stu student turnouts in a while, Glenn. Well, it's the last week of classes before finals. Let off some steam here against a good team. This is going to be a top 25 team before the uh, year is over. And a good test for the Aggies. So far hanging in, struggled a little bit there. Was it gave up that early lead, but uh, still very much in this one. So Raman will go to the free throw line and try to complete the old fashioned three point one. As he got the bucket to go. He's a 47% free throw shooter, 19 of 40 coming into the ball game. The Aggies at the free throw line, six of nine in the ball game. Arizona is one of three at the foul line, so the Aggies advantage starting to show up at the foul line again. And Raman hits the free throw. I, I almost consider those bonus points. Oh, I do too. You gotta make them though if you get to the line. That's been part of the problem. Right now, however, the Aggies have a better free throw percentage than their opponents, which uh, has been very rare in the last couple of years here. Going back to Martin Eady and those two. 2-2-1, two, two, full court press from New Mexico State. Perry gets it across. Johnson to Perry. As the Aggies trap Johnson, but he leaped up. He's got some hops, yeah. as they say. Well, he's in 5-9 here. Mays top of the circle off the screen drains it. Jordan Mays with two three-point buckets. Arizona by seven again. Aggies get close, Arizona hits a bucket. Aggies get close, Arizona hits a bucket. That's been the trend. Ball lost. McKinnis in heavy traffic finds Mullins going to the hole. Well, he is aggressive. And it's a five-point Wildcat lead. Perry, left of the lane, double team. Johnson draws a double team underneath. He's a fearless freshman. Mays drives. Good defense by Napoli to change his shot. Mullings in the open floor. Reverse. See with the slam. That brings the crowd to their feet. And Marvin Menzies screaming, get back, get back, get back. Wildcats take the timeout. Mullins in the open floor showed his burst of speed. He missed it. That just set C up for the slam dunk. Let's watch it. Uh, very bad landing there. The dunk looked great, but the landing left something to be desired. You're not going to give him a good no. points on the dismount? No. <laughs> Comcast is the exclusive provider of all of Aggie Vision's live telecasts. Aggie Vision produces more than 40 games each season, and Comcast is the only partner to bring you every one of those events. For the most coverage of New Mexico State Athletics, watch Aggie Vision this season on Comcast. Aggie fight song from the pep band as everybody on their feet after the sea dunk brings the Aggies to within three. Sean Miller took the time out to set up this possession. Arizona has seemingly had all the answers when the Aggies draw to within three. Let's see what Sean Miller talked about during the timeout. Marvin Menzies stopping. C steps in, knocks it away. Ball belongs to the University of Arizona. 20 seconds left on that shot clock. Again, last possession, Jeff. They got it down to under eight seconds before the shot was taken. You said that was going to be one of the keys. Man-to-man -man defense for New Mexico State. Got to the hole, couldn't finish. Foul. Going against Arizona. Not yet, still.
think he's yeah, got Napawi. Yeah, when he gets the Yankees, he yeah. got Napawi. I just saw the one and thought it was a four, not a five. Well, I thought he was flashing 51, so I'm looking for a 51. Well, that's the opposite of 15. Huh? Yeah, I saw him going over uh, Wendell. Turner's having a tough night at the free throw line. He's 0 for 3, 75% at the free throw line coming into the ball game. Got that one to go. 59 seconds remaining to be played here in the opening half. So the Yankees jumped out to a big lead in the first couple of minutes. Arizona's has opened up some new 10 point leads, but anybody's ball game at this juncture. Nice defense by Turner. Fires it ahead to Perry for the run out, the slam dunk. It's a six-point Arizona lead. The Aggies could play for the last shot if they want to. There's about a half-second difference in the shot clock in the game plan. Rollin finishes. He's playing a nice game. Stop. Yes, he really is. Game, Couldn't agree with you more, Glenn. Rollin averaging seven a game. He already has seven here at the half. It is average. Five seconds until halftime. Can Rahman catch up to it? No. Well, we got a foul just before the buzzer. I think it's against Arizona. Yes, it is. Going to go against Perrin. That'll send the Aggies to the free throw line because they're in the bonus. Yep. So they'll shoot free throws with time expired here. Vern Harris and David Hall and Randy McCall will talk about it now. They may look at our replay, Glenn, and see. I, I don't the foul came long before. I think you, they are going see to the, check. Yeah, they're going to check the monitor and see whether he was fouled before time had run out. Looks whistle, to me like on first visit. Whistle the, sounded long before the, the buzzer ran out. But, you know, I look at it. We got another view of it. Nice camera. Look. That's not these, what they're looking at. They're looking over things? in the corner. Right? I think the other angle is the one they want to see. So Glenn and I no longer have control of the Aggie Vision ship. The officials do. Time has expired. And it's 44 to 40. Arizona with the lead. I think this is the angle that shows it. Watch on your right side. The road is going to get it. Harem's going to end up on top of it. There's the foul, and the basket isn't lit yet. Yeah, it's point two. Yep. So they're going to get the free throws, I believe. If they see it the way we do on our monitors here. It's not that we're biased here. Here's another look at it. And so the cameraman pulls out here just in time to see it. Point six at that juncture, hands in the arm. Point nine, they're telling me in the truck now. Come I don't on. have the 46 inch monitor. No. Come on, Jace, lay to the crowd. That was nice candle. So the Aggies will, in fact, get free throws as the replay showed that the whistle came prior to the clock expiring, and they put point nine on the clock here at the Pan American Center. So the Yankees could get a uh, tip in on this one as well if it's missed. So LaRoche to the free throw line, a 69% free throw shooter on the year. And runs out. What kind of a weird ending to an exciting first half as LaRoche misses the free throw, had a chance to bring the Yankees to within two at the front end and the back end. So the two teams head to the locker room. The University of Arizona 44, New Mexico State 40. Halftime activities after this on Aggie Vision. 
Have you ever been on TV? Well, now is your chance. Go to any Fantastic Sam's location to register for your chance to be an Altitude Kitcaster for a night. Sit in the broadcast studio and ask a pro hockey or basketball player a question. Winners receive game tickets and a whole lot more. Visit your local Fantastic Sam's location for your chance to win. Color, waves, texture, whatever look you're going for, Fantastic Sam's stylists are ready with the latest options in color, cuts, highlights, and lowlights. Fantastic Sam's, your style awaits. Come enjoy fine dining and cocktails in a classic atmosphere at Poppy's. Build your own Bloody Mary bar Saturday and Sunday brunch. Two daily happy hours featuring specials on beer, wine, and spirits. Seven days a week, 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. Daily happy hour food specials. half price bottles of wine Tuesday evenings with two entrees. Poppy's has been located just south of Islip Avenue on South Colorado Boulevard for over 25 years. Happy holidays from Poppy's. American Family Insurance received the highest ranking by J.D. Power & Associates for providing the highest in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance purchase experience. What does that mean? Well, we believe that means... Took a timeout. McKinnis had a terrific first half. He brings the three ball there. Wendell McKinnis had three three-pointers in the first half. Arizona the answer. They had six three-pointers themselves. That was Kyle Fogg. And then the Nick Johnson slam dunk. dunk. And here's Wendell McKinnis missing. But down inside was Nepal. The Aggies had a lot of second-chance points. We have 15 second-half points for the Aggies. But, uh, you know, I don't care who you're playing at what level. If your opponent is scoring at 60% of their shots in a half, they're probably going to lead. And that's the case here. Aggies actually with that lead, as we looked at the uh, keys of the game, have the lead in rebounding. But, again, that 60% shooting and so much of that, Jeff, on the fast break. Moving down court and getting the easy shot. Arizona has three more field goals than does the Aggies. Arizona has three more three-pointers than the Aggies do. But the big equalizer has been the free throw line and the second chance points. And here we go, second half. From the Pan American Center, Aggies get the ball first here. As New Mexico State gets it inside to Rahm and triple team. Tips in his own miss. He has nine points. Season high is 10 against San Francisco up at the Great Alaska Shootout. And a foul on the way to the basket. So you've got to like what Hamadou Rahman is doing right now. He's just standing there. See that 60% free throw shooting? Free throws, Aggies with the edge, rebounds. Uh, again, New Mexico State there, but again, 60% shooting. That's why it's 44 42 right now. Aggies in his own off the inbound. Alley-oop for Johnson. He couldn't handle the pass from Mays. Cabongo, one on two to the basket anyway, draws the foul. Shoveled it off the bottom of the rim, but earns a trip to the free throw line. I, where I, the Aggies have shot many more free throws than have the Wildcats tonight. Admired the attempt at the uh, alley-oop there on that play by Arizona, but New Mexico State is really just a little bit too much athletic for that to uh, occur at, with any kind of success. There's the scoring. You mentioned McKinnis with 13. Johnson coming off the bench with nine. He had a good half. Tabongo hits the free throw. Christian now with three points and three rebounds, an assist and two turnovers. Hits them both. And they're tied. Aggies will press. Mays against LaRoche, Perry out front left side. Stepping in for a near steal is Watson. His and the Wildcats will throw it in. His anticipation is really good. I, I, again, he just got that sense of where to break on the ball and get a good angle. So we're about a minute into the second half as you see Watson knock it away. And the Aggies have tied it up at 44. Mays to Hill to Perry for a wide open three. Rattles out. McKinnis clears the board for the Aggies. Other end, he'll try a three. A little short. Gets his own rebound. Rahman turns baseline. What a move by Hamadou. New season high, 11. 
And more important, the Yankees have the lead. Yankee fans on their feet at the Pan American Center. I feel like I've gone back in time. This place has all the fixings of the Panamaniacs back in the 90s. Let's watch Hamadou turn baseline. Works carry over. Aggies lead early second half. How do I celebrate the holidays? Oh, I come to the mall, talk about Ford. Have you actually been in an F-150 before? Ranked highest in initial quality. Where can I get one of these? These are nice. EcoBoost engine in the F-150. The power of a V8 with the fuel efficiency of a V6. I really want to drive this thing, man. I'm impressed. I take it right up here, hit the food court, get up to 5,500 cash back, or zero for 60 plus up to 1,500 cash back on F-150. Visit your local Ford store today. It's a year-end celebration. I would go to the Ford dealership, honestly. You're all set to go. That was fast. You sure I don't need anything else? According to your owner's manual, you're all up to date. Grease Monkey's full-service oil change includes checking and filling all your car's fluids. We vacuum, wash exterior windows, and set your tire pressure. Everything your dealer does to keep you under warranty without selling you anything you don't need. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Grease Monkey. Only what you need, guaranteed. For special offers and a location near you, go to GreaseMonkeyCarCare.com. Since 1961, Dino's Italian Food has been serving the best Italian food to four generations of Coloradans. Dino's has a great selection of your favorites and is reasonably priced. For the holidays, try Dino's Famous Pies. Visit Dino's for great happy hour specials in our remodeled bar. Dino's is located at 10040 West Colfax in Lakewood. For more information, call 303-238-7393. Happy holidays from Dino's Italian Food. New Mexico State University is partnering with KRWG-FM to provide access to NMSU experts for the Las Cruces area community. The radio segment called Ask NMSU allows members of the community to send in questions which will be answered by various professors. In honor of the state centennial celebration, the broadcast will begin with answers from NMSU history professor John Hunter. To submit a question or learn more, visit krwg.org. New Mexico State has the lead, 46-44, the first lead for the Aggies since the 10:56 mark in the first half. I'm Jeff Matthews, along with Glenn Cerny, the Wildcats in the dark blue uniforms with the basketball. New Mexico State in the white uniforms on defense. That's the big guy from Ukraine. This is the jump shot, and up with it is LaRoche. One-on-one -on -one collision blocking foul against the Wildcats. Turner. And it'll be free throws for LaRoche. Turner doing a nice job of getting back, but there's no way he could set his feet as LaRoche took it straight to the hoop, and he just couldn't, couldn't quite get set. You know, one stat I don't like, since 1997, when Arizona scores 80 or more points, they're winning 201 to 19 games, 92%. And they were over 40 at half. Both free throws and the Mexico State's lead is 4, 48-44. The Aggies had a 10-2 lead early in the first half, coming right out of the gate. Students on both ends on their feet. Perry to the basket, finishes. Perry having a nice game. Another point off the switch. Cuts it to two again. Bongo brings it back out. 20 on the shot clock, plenty of time. Aggies by two, 17-18 to play in the game. There's a three from LaRoche. It hits the side of the glass. Rebound pulled down by Hill. Hill takes it to the right wing. Working on Watson. Gets to the baseline. Banks it up and in for the tie. Good move by Solomon Hill. Hill with 10 points and five rebounds. Cabango back the other way. Dishes for Ramon. It's knocked away. Going to the baskets. McKinnis and he finishes. Fifteen point six rebounds for McKinnis. Couldn't finish. Basketball's tied up between the two giants. Ramon 
and not Yasko. This, this, this is two heavyweights going end to end right now, Jeff. These two teams are playing hard. This could be some of the most exciting 16 minutes and 39 seconds of basketball you're going to see. And it pretty much looks like a full house in attendance here to see it. Good crowd wearing white for the whiteout. Yep, that man's nervous. The tie up there. Lavender gets it into the left corner. Three is missed by Nays. Aggies rebound. Lead by two. Have the ball. Cabongo will push it. He was tripped by Turner. Be the inbound as he didn't get the shot off. And a sub coming for Sean Miller. Four on Turner. So Turner comes out of the game and Jordan Mays goes in. There isn't a huge drop off between Turner and Mays. Watson to throw it in. Bon Jesse goes to the scorer's table to check in. Johnson on Cabanga. McKinnis draws a double. That leaves Watson open. Circles out. And the rebound to Mays of Arizona. Mullings on the floor for the Yankees. He's drawn the assignment on Mays. McCauley working on Perry. Then they switched. Here's Hill going to the basket. McKinnis picks him up. Johnson for a three. That's one fine freshman fine for the Wildcats. He had a season high 14. He's nearing that right now. He has a dozen Mullings to the basket to McKinnis for another three. Amazing. Aggies back up by two. And Marvin Menzies will take the time out. It's a 30-second time out. Again, it's back and forth on the answer, so it's, you know, just moving all around. So here are the young fans. And the Aggie fight song comes on, and the fans are on their feet. Again, want to remind you, $5 tickets for children 12 and under for the Aggie football game against Utah State. Certainly hopes to see you there. The New Mexico State basketball team will go on the road uh, for a game at Southern Miss on next Sunday. Then the following Sunday at UTEP and return here on the 14th of December against Western New Mexico. Yeah, you said this was you were excited about a game. I don't know how many games you and I aren't excited about. <laughs> That's just kind of a taken, isn't it? Yeah, we both got here real early for the Eastern New Mexico exhibition game. I, you know, I'm, I'm not in my office. Need I say any more? 53-51, New Mexico State leads Arizona in a dandy. 15-26 to play in the game. Wildcat basketball, Lavender to throw it in. Aggies are pressing. They get it in the maze, working on Mullins, and gets it across. Hard to trap him, and he didn't allow him to do that. Mays a sophomore, Mullins a freshman. There's the three-point shooting in this game. Arizona with the edge. They go to the high post to Hill. In and out. Watson with the rebound. Great outlet pass to Mullins. Arizona gets back on defense. They are quick up and down the court. The Bongo trying to break Johnson down off the dribble. Scoops and misses. Rebound pulled down by Lavender. Hill drives the wing. Nice look to Perry for the slam dunk in the tie. They really broke down the Aggie defense there. Well, the Aggies didn't get back quick enough. They never got set up in the defense. 14.30 to play. We haven't settled a thing. 53 off. There's another stat. Second chance points dominated by New Mexico State. That's the offensive rebounds. Bonja C can't get it to go. Perry rebounds. Hill. Is ahead of the pack. Good hustle by C to get back and slow him down. Hill takes it back in there. Cut off. That's Nick Johnson fouled on the way in. Good quick ball movement. And Arizona, I think, is taking the title. 53 all. 14 minutes 
last to play of the game as you see Hall go to the basket. It's Wednesday here in Las Cruces. Paso and Las Cruces are growing. EPE has been investing up front to meet energy needs. We expanded the Newman Power Station using new technology so we can make cleaner energy efficiently. Get the whole story at epelectric.com. El Paso Electric. I inherited my father's 69 Norton Commando. It's been a dream of mine to restore it. <laughs> it's my dream for him to finish it. Frank has something great to save up for. This is my dad. Isn't that cool? And a very understanding girlfriend. I showed him a Wells Fargo savings account with my savings plan. And what it does is it takes a little bit of my money and puts it towards my goal. I want to get all the original parts and do it right for my dad. There's a couple months in between parts. <laughs> so, uh, one at a time. Wells Fargo, with you when it's time to save. New Mexico State basketball on Aggie Vision is brought to you by Pioneer Bank, Comcast, Premier Distributing, and by Memorial Medical Center. Care for your health. Wendell McKinnis having a monster night. 18 points, six rebounds so far for the senior. He's four of six from the three-point line. Well, he's worked on that shooting. I, I, again, we talked a little bit about it last game with UTEP. I think back to his freshman and sophomore year when he would take that shot from the top of the key, you just hold your breath. And now he's hitting it at a very, very good rate. There's his numbers tonight. Heading towards another double-double. He has three double-doubles this year and 30 career double-doubles. He's going to catch a, bre a breather and out of the break here. Seventh game with uh, this year with double scoring points. Wildcats have three in double figures, 11 for Perry, 10 for Hill, a dozen for Johnson. Aggies with 18 for McKinnis and 11 for Rama. They get it to Hill, kick out left side to Johnson, lets a defender go by, launches and leaves it short. But Perry rebounds and is stuck going back up. The Good communication between Randy McCall and David Hall. This is a crew with a lot of Final Fours under its belt. Vern Harris, the third member of this officiating crew. I'd be willing to bet you'd find fans in blue and white that would disagree with you on that. <laughs> Ball kicked away by Hill. 24 still on the shot clock. He gets it into Ernst LaRoche. Shot clock did not reset. New leadership. Man to man defense for Arizona. Mullings off a little roll and banks it up, but too strong. Got to the basket, but couldn't finish. Perry with another rebound. Mays had ideas of sending that down underneath the basket. Instead, goes to Hill. Kick out three from Lavender, and he drains the three. He's four for six from beyond the three-point line on the season map. That was beyond the three-point NBA. Sean Miller says he's their best three-point shooter, and they've got some good ones. That was Arizona's eighth three-pointer in the ball game. Wildcats by three. LaRoche kicks left side. Mullins tries to answer. Can't do it. McCauley knocked it out of bounds. It belongs to the Wildcats. Joel checking in again. Yep, Joel coming in, the big freshman. Also coming into the ball games, Kyle Fogg. Freshman from Khartoum, Sudan. We talk about the international flavor that the Aggies have. A little bit there, too. Perry's getting a breather. He has really been good on the glass for the Wildcats. We'll see how they rebound with Perry on the bench. Sean Miller hoping to make some shots and they don't need a rebound. 
Nice move by Johnson, but he didn't finish. Rebound to McKinnis. Three-point game, Arizona with the lead on defense. Manjasi left wing, goes baseline, being held by Solomon Hill. Well, that's his fourth. That's going to be his fourth. So Arizona getting into some foul trouble. Yeah, Turner and Hill now both with four. And Perry's breather. I hope he enjoyed it. It was very yeah. short. Here's the move. That's the move that drew the fourth foul on Hill. So Perry's back in after about a 20-second breather. And Pally lobs it in to McKinnis. Fresh shot clock as McKinnis goes to the basket. Hits it. Now, again, Jeff, I I'm telling you, 4.30 this afternoon, I'm here, and he's working on that shot with Tony Dell. They just went through so many shots. So, again, my hat's off to Wendell McKinnis. He has worked so hard on improving his shot, and you saw it there. And he was coaching the crowd up during warm-ups a little bit. So he couldn't hear him was getting the students involved way before tip-off. And as Wendell typically does, came over to me and said, you know, we're going to win them. Just didn't tweet it this time. In another tie ball game. Now, if it's up to win, they will win. 21 points, seven rebounds for McKinnis as Marvin Menzies has the Aggies pressing again. Fog Turner, Perry, Choll, and Lavender on the floor for the Wildcats. Perry to the basket. Picks out Lavender. He'll try to take it on Bonjasi. Ball knocked free. Scramble on the floor. Maybe ball on the jump ball. Good hustle by Bonjasi. Lavender had the open shot. He passed it up. So we're at the under 12 break. New Mexico State 56, Arizona 56. Things heating up here in Las Cruces. You work Just what does it take to become Mr. Olympia? Find out on the next one-on-one -on -one as our own Scott Hastings sits down with the gift himself, Bill Heath. I'm a TV, and my owner is a huge NHL fan, which is awesome because we just ordered NHL Center Ice. You get total control with up to 40 out-of-market games a week, many in HD. My man wants to see Flyers Bruins? Boom! Canucks, Blackhawks, Penguins, Capitals? Things will get so crazy in here every night, I may not even stay screwed into the wall. Now let me rest up. I got eight games on tonight. NHL Center Ice. The game lives where you do. Don't miss any of this season's action on DirecTV. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS today. Millions of American jobs start right here. America's farmers export over $100 billion of crops and products. We have the number one trade surplus of any American industry. It's as true today as it has been for generations. America's farmers grow America. Brought to you on behalf of America's farmers by Monsanto. For love, off of your Colorado Avalanche, finish off the month with a home matchup against Zach Parise and the New Jersey Devils. Devils. And the action starts Wednesday at 7, only on Altitude Sports. Be sure to become a fan of Aggie Vision on Facebook. By doing so, you're sure to receive fun updates about New Mexico State Athletics in your news feed and let us know where you're watching from on our wall. Visit Facebook.com slash AggieVision right now. Some big-time foul trouble for the University of Arizona. They've got two with four fouls, Solomon Hill and Josiah Turner. Meanwhile, New Mexico State doesn't have anybody with three fouls. Yeah. And again, Napoli has really gotten his game under control. You know, we're talking about Facebook and where are you watching the game. I want to say a quick hello to uh, Bob and Lori Todd in Tucson. I'm sure they're enjoying a fine glass of wine as they watch their Wildcats and our Aggies when they aren't cheering for the Boise State Rockets. Game's tied up, 11.40 to play in the game. Cabongo draws a double team. Then he finds Robin alone underneath the basket. He's fouled by Joel. And another three-point opportunity for Hamadou Rama. Hamadou, 13 points tonight. That is a season high. 
there's just no question in my mind, uh, even without 14 points, his aggressiveness underneath, his ability to cause trouble and go up strong with the ball has been his best night I have seen. And remember, he had the big calf injury much of last year. So Arizona down two with the basketball. A lot of time left. That was Perham in the high post. But Johnson back to Perham. Turner back in there playing with the four fouls. Perham to the basket. Robin changed the shot, I think. It went out of bounds. It was off of McKinnis, they say. Randy McCall points Arizona as well. Speaking of uh, disagreements on your compliments to the referee, the student section there pretty much disagreed with that. Cats and dogs, yeah. cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you're wearing a striped jersey, you're probably not going to get all, all accolades through the night. Some relationships aren't meant to work. Yeah. Randy McCall goes over to the scorer's table now. You can take a look at it and see. Two Aggies fought for the ball and knocked it away. Wendell off of his head, but it really looked like Perry went off his head. But not sure what Randy McCall's checking in. Join us for our next broadcast of the Mexico State women's basketball Friday, December 30th. The Yankees host the New Mexico Lobos at 6.30 p.m. We'll be live on Comcast, KVI 7.3, and Altitude 2. For channels in your area, visit AggieVision.tv. So a warning of some type. A warning against the Aggie crowd, I'm not sure what the nature of it was, but they have been warned over the PA system. The only thing I heard was gosh darn. So some, some sort of uh, crowd warning is all in it. Here's Nick Johnson left wing, launches, oh, in and out. Basket spit it out. That was almost all the way down. How uh, did that, that not go? I got it clarified, it was the G Willikers. McKinnis on Johnson, that's a mismatch. Well, not when he settles for a jump shot, huh? Johnson, left corner, three on the way, and good. This time dropped two by five. And Arizona takes a one-point lead. In the Roman. Out to LaRoche. Good box out by Perry. Again, the Yankees just have not found a consistent outside shooter. Turner for three. Up high for the rebound, McKinnis. Cabongo brings it up. Arizona by one. Cabongo's pass. Take it away. Turner lobs it ahead to Johnson. Johnson puts it up and in. And a foul on McKinnis. Arizona by three. Pending the free throw. I know what Wendell was trying to do there, but that's one. He's already up in the air. Well, and Anita mistakes on the other end by Cabongo with the pass and threw into the teeth of the Wildcat Eagles. So a big turnover, big takeaway, and there is Nick Johnson, the 16 freshman from Gilbert, Arizona. And he did leave it on the front rim that time. Uh, you know, Jeff, they worked so hard to get that lead quickly in the first half and go toe-to-toe -to -toe here. You got 9.45 left. The Yankees cannot afford to let up one iota here. Johnson hits the free throw, and that's a new career high for him as a Wildcat. He has 15. I'm guessing before his career's over, that's not going to be his career high. Yeah, we, we've seen but a sliver of his Wildcat career. But he had 14 in a game earlier this year, 15 tonight so far with a lot of time left. Cabongo answers. Cabongo with six, averages 15 a game. They have slowed him down enough. Cats by two. Turner goes back door to Johnson, and he elevates for another slam dunk. I told you that wouldn't be his career, right? Yeah, you're right. He adds to it with style and flair. 
He is terrific. I really like him. Debongo going to the basket. Got to the hole, but didn't finish, and Perry secures the rebound. Arizona by four. Arizona's got fresh legs, keep in mind. The Aggies just got back from Alaska. This is their fourth game, what, in six days, Glenn. Turner to the rack. Just got through there so smoothly. Gonna get Mullins back into the game for New Mexico State. Arizona's guards putting on a show at this juncture of the game, and they've opened up a six-point lead. And Marvin Menzies will spend the time out, 8.30 to play in the game. We'd like to say hello to our viewers tonight watching on Fox Sports Arizona. Aggie Vision thanks Fox Sports Arizona for their support of New Mexico State Athletics. I also want to thank all of the uh, crew watching us in Arizona. Pleasure to have you on board with us during this great game. And I want to remind all the Aggie fans, Saturday afternoon, 1.30 kickoff, the Utah State Aggies. And boy, we've had some great, great games between the Aggies and the Aggies. And again, children's tickets, 12 and under, just $5 for a good football contest. And I want to tip my hat to a lot of those seniors. Play-by-play -play man's nightmare. Aggies versus Aggies. Well, you just kind of skip it. <laughs> On the other hand, you can never be wrong. Now for the viewer. Arizona on a 10-2 run over the last minute 50 of this basketball game, sparked by Nick Johnson and the rebounding of Perry. Some Watson. discussion on the court that they finally got scared away. Now they decided whether C had to be on the floor or not. I'm not sure if he checked in in time or what was going on. He's off the floor now. It's Mullins, Watson, LaRoche. Napaway and McKinnis, three from Watson. And the rebound pulled down by Turner. Turner playing with four fouls, but since he's come back into the game, the Wildcats have gone on that run. Turner, a 6'3 freshman from Sacramento. Was the number 10 overall guard prospect in the country by Rivals.com. Foul against Napaway will send. Fog to the free throw line. So Arizona has a six point lead. They've opened up a little bit of an edge here. 7.51 to play in the game. Wilbur likes what he sees. A lot of McKinnis tonight. We'll have the stretch run after this. Las Cruces is a great place to live and do business. To keep informed your hometown newspaper, the Las Cruces Bulletin, is your best source of local news. With local features and photos, you can keep up with Las Cruces in sports, business, arts, and lifestyles. Now the Las Cruces Bulletin is introducing homes in Southwest Living. You'll find homes for sale plus decorating and remodeling ideas. You'll even meet local builders and realtors who can help you plan your dream home. Pick up the Bulletin today at one of more than 250 locations around town. The Las Cruces Bulletin, your hometown newspaper. Come on, Daddy, promise me you'll take me to Brandon's house. Dreaming of something better? We can help. White Sands Federal Credit Union has auto loans with low rates and easy terms to help you get that car you've always dreamed of. See us today. We'll write you a check and make your dreams a reality, too. Hi, I'm Esther. My name is David. Hello, my name is Kulbush. Hi, I'm Michelle. New Mexico State University is our home. Shape the future with us. Our research solves real-world problems. Invest with us. We make a difference in New Mexico and beyond. Ask us. Our extension agents offer sound advice to people all over the state. Excel with us. We help students make their dreams come true. New Mexico State University, unleashing potential. After tonight's game, log on to nmstatesports.com for a full recap of the game, plus stats and scores from all of your favorite Aggie sports. nmstatesports.com is your home for New Mexico State Athletics. Be sure to tune in to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. This week, Coach Walker joins us to preview the final game of the season against Utah State, plus first-year assistant coach Tamara Inouye stops by to talk women's hoops. The show airs weekly on KRWG-TV, Altitude, and Fox Sports Arizona. 
or watch the full episode on YouTube. We say with a heavy heart, goodbye wave, Joe. to Joe oh, yeah. Brickman. Wave goodbye. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of working very, very closely with Joe for four years now, and I wish him well going to back home to Ohio to the Buckeye State to work at WBNS in Columbus. And Joe, you will be missed. I enjoyed his sense of humor. Jeff, I got most of the stuff he wanted me to say over the air in. And he'll be singing Sweet Caroline with a lot of Neil Diamond as he leaves. Been fun. Arizona by eight. See if the Yankees can answer as we're under eight. Mullins in the right place at the right time. Couldn't get it to go. And Arizona comes out of there with the loose ball. Arizona trying to put it away. Turner draws a foul. They are pushing it. Well, and, and again, they've been doing that in that team speed. At that time, Mullins was able to get back and put it back to three on three. But they just, they're just they very quick getting down court. Well, you wonder if the four games and six days for the Aggies. Meanwhile, Arizona on fresh legs takes a toll at this juncture of the ball game. A wise coach by the name of Johnny Orr once told me that teams that like to run don't like to be run on. And the Aggies have seen a little bit of that tonight. Hill checks in. Perry will get a rest. Hill's playing with four fouls, so they've got... Turner and Hill with four fouls, both on the floor with 7.30 to play in the game. And the Wildcats have opened up a 10-point lead here on the road. McKenna spotting up. Johnson runs at him. Ball kept alive by Watson. And it'll stay with New Mexico State. Wendell, four of seven from the three-point line. 7-17, seven, really need to get a bucket here. Mullings will try for three. Can't hit one from outside. They've gone cold from out there. And Arizona, in the meantime, has rebounded and pushed it and opened up a 10-point lead. Aggies 4 of 19 from the three-point line. Cabongo with the fatal up. It worked. Wildcats by eight with the ball. Aggies have fallen back into a 2-3 zone. There's the Arizona run. Nick Johnson goes baseline, gets to the basket, scoops and scores. He's got 19. Wow. Derek who? Johnson doesn't start, but he's come off the bench. He averages 9.7 again. He's more than doubled that tonight, and there's still six and change to go. Here's Cabongo. McKinnis hits. He hasn't been starting, but he's been averaging over 24 minutes a game, Jeff, so he's getting good time. Arizona will take a timeout at the 551 mark, up eight as Sean Miller tries to enter into the transition of what we like to call winning day. Yeah, we, you know, we talk a little bit about the fact that Arizona is really struggling to find an identity. And uh, with the play of uh, Nick Johnson today, he certainly may have started to do that. The game Sports Bar and Grill is home to the weekly coaches' luncheon. Join us for lunch, win fun door prizes, and hear from the leaders of New Mexico State Athletics. The last football coaches' luncheon of the season takes place Friday, December 2nd at noon at the game. Persian at 10, the Aggie Pep Band on a whiteout night. Good crowd. Very good crowd. Not many empty seats at all. Yeah. Students really came out. Well, you get to see, again, they aren't in the top 25 now, but high probability they will end up back up there at some point this year. Pick to finish third in the Pac-12. I'll, I'll give you a shocking record just a second. Speaking of predictions in the Pac-12. Perry's back in. That's him with the basketball, and he drives on Rama and throws it off the side of the glass, gets it back. 
And a foul against Rama. UCLA was picked ahead of Arizona. UCLA right now, this is the Bruins I'm talking about, are one and four on the season. Raman couldn't believe it, but picks up the foul. And I think they called the foul before he break the foot. Ooh. Solomon Hill with the jam. Hill averages 12 a game. He has a dozen in the game tonight. Wildcats by 10 again. The Bongo's defender fell down. That leads to a McKinnis slam dunk. That's called an exclamation point. Perry will try for three. No good. Rebound to McKinnis. There were no Wildcats underneath the basket. Aggies haven't been hitting by it from outside. Maybe time to go inside. McKinnis waves away. Cabongo goes to the basket and scores. McKinnis says, it's on my shoulders, guys. All right. We said very early in the second half that if it's up to Wendell McGinnis, this game will be over very soon. Unfortunately, Arizona's been able to answer time in and time out, but Wendell's putting on another show here. Got some changes. Mays will go out, turn her back in. 27 for McKinnis. He had 23 against UTEP. It's a new career high for McKinnis. 28 now. And the lead's cut to five. So neither team has really been able to shake each other. Aggies had an eight-point lead early. Wildcats have led it by 10 here in the second half. Under five. Turner hands it off to Johnson. Out to Fogg. Aggies really picking up the defensive pressure. Hill penetrates. Nice look to Perry. He reverses it up and in. 13 for Perry. Back the other way. Bon Jesse. Good dancer. Rebound to Solomon Hill. Left side to Turner. Wildcats by seven with the ball. Turner penetrates. Collision. Blocking foul to go. Two shots for the Wildcats as Bon Jesse took it. Here's a look at it. I'll tell you what, on the replay, he was moving more than I thought. Incidentally, in addition to his 28 points, McKinnis has 10 rebounds, so another double-double for him tonight. Turner, a 75% free throw shooter. He's four for seven from the line tonight. Turner will get another one. And the Wildcats lead his man. LaRoche against Turner. Johnson picks him up on the switch, and then Ernst throws it away. Turner to the rack, foul against LaRoche, and they're going to call that an intentional. Flagrant, remember? Yeah, that's our <laughs> new rule. So the foul against New Mexico State, Wildcats will go to the free throw line when we return. Wildcats have opened up a nine point lead as you see Turner go to the basket and LaRoche commit the foul. Hey, Mr. Newlywed. Hey, how's it going? How's life since the big day? Oh, it's great, man. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, you really got to check out the new TV I just got from American Furniture Warehouse. She's a beauty. I see, huh? Okay. All right, well, tell me about it. She's good for movies, sports, you name it. She's got it. And hey, she's unbelievably thin. <laughs> well, it sounds like things are working out good for you, man. Yeah, man, I got a good deal. Enough of the talk. Let's watch the game. Come on, go. With leading brands like LG and Samsung, AFW is your HD TV headquarters. We've got what you're looking for. Experience authentic homestyle cooking at Tafalino's Mexican Restaurants. Whether you're looking for hot burritos or cold margaritas, only Tafalino's can satisfy your cravings. Tafalino's is tapotastic. For good food and good fun, bring your friends and family to Tafalino's Mexican Restaurants. Tafalino's is tapotastic. 
Check out Toffolino's Facebook page for coupons at our Christmas tree lot. Merry Christmas from Toffolino's. The Toyota Black Friday sales event has been extended. Come in to your local Toyota dealer and get low APRs, like 0% for 60 months on Corolla. Great leases, like $199 per month on RAV4. Or choose incredible cash back options, like $2,500 on Tundra Crew Max. But only during the Black Friday sales event. Don't wait. These amazing deals end soon. Only at these neighborhood Toyota stores. Time for the El Paso Electric electrifying play of the game. Wendell McKinnis with the slam. Wendell's having a huge night. And there you see him going to the basket after directing some traffic and creating a clear out for himself. He's had a monster night. As I said, you got to give the gentleman from Oakland, California a lot of credit. 28 points, and he has worked on his shooting. I, I mean, honestly, Jeff... He's the best shooter the Yankees have got right now. He has all four of New Mexico State's three-pointers tonight. He's four of seven for the three-point line, so the rest of the Yankees are 0 for 12. If you would have told me that I would be saying Wendell McKinnis was the best shooter three years ago, I would have laughed. Turner hits the free throw. At that point, they also had some... Las Cruces kid by the name of Castillo. Wendell with his fourth double-double this year. He also has 10 rebounds to go along with his 28 points. It's his 31st career double-double at New Mexico State. With Marvin Menzies, when he went to break, Marvin really was jawing with Vern Harris while we were away. He said the a lot of the time out. Here's the killer. Second half free throw shooting, one of 10 for New Mexico State, 10%. And I think the Arizona Wildcats did a good job rebounding those misses. They were getting killed on second chance points in the first half. Aggies in his own, down 10 with 336 to play. They get the turnover. McKinnis has traffic behind him. They kick out. I think the way the Knights got from the three-point line, that wasn't a bad move by Cabongo, but he missed the move into the paint. back at 10. Desperately need a stop here. And you can see the team's lack of confidence in the three-point shooting on that last position. As they passed up a couple looks at it. Fog with it, working on Cabongo, six on the shot clock. Perry comes out to screen. Fog drives left of the key, goes in the air, dishes out of bounds. Arizona, one on the shot clock. So get your best one second play out. It's the grab your ear play. And at this point, yes, if you have the ball, you are open. Sean Miller grabbed his ear to indicate what play he wants here. Alley oop. They got the shot off. Aggies rebound. Got the stop they needed. The bongo throws it away. Oh. Perry fumbles it out of bounds. 236 to play. Jeff, he's going to put the game away right there. I yep. mean, a slam dunk would have taken this crowd out of it. A 12 point lead with 236, and he just couldn't hang on to it. To use your man, Wayne Larrabee's expression, that could have been the dagger. Yeah. The bongo frees himself up and lays it up and in. Quick time out. It's an eight point game with 223 to play. Saturday afternoon, 1.30, the Aggies and the Utah State Aggies at Memorial Stadium, 1.30 kickoff. Come on out, bring the kids $5 for children 12 and under. It'll be a fun one senior night, and we've had some seniors that have played valiantly. I don't think I've seen bigger heart from a player than what I've seen from Matt Christian this year. The emergence of Donye Coleman, Bradley on the defense, those linebackers, and, uh, oh, then there's a certain... Uh, Wide receiver, kick return man by the name of Tavian uh, Rogers has just done a couple of spectacular things. What's Christian's health like this week? Have you heard? I'm not sure if yeah. he's. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. 
if Matt can tie his shoes, he'll play. Exactly. There's Marvin Menzies. He's been practicing with just his right arm, so he doesn't have to use the left. Marvin knows the Aggies need a big defensive effort this last 222. Turner to Nick Johnson. Johnson's had a career night in his early Wildcat career. He gives it off to Solomon Hill, 17 on the shot clock. Hill out front left side working on McKinnis. Hill will drive, loses the ball to Bongo. Two on two. Cabongo draws the foul, couldn't finish. Had to go to the hoop, though. You got to get the quick basket here. Here's the other dilemma, Jeff. Coming into the night's game, Arizona as a team was shooting 72% from the free throw line. So you want to go foul them, and that really isn't a high proposition either. So you got to play stellar defense and try to get the stop. Cabongo four for six at the foul line tonight. Ten points, three rebounds, and three assists. He is going to be disappointed in himself. He expects more. Because when you make 30 in a row, you kind of get used to making it. He's eked into double figures tonight. Misses both. He has ten points, and he's had double figures in six of the Aggies' seven games. It's an eight-point Wildcat lead. Trying to put it on ice here on the road. A hostile crowd. They've lost two in a row. Turner to the rack. Mapali with the rebound. Wildcats have had two or three bad trips. There's the bucket plus the foul. And it's a six-point game with a minute 17 to play. Johnson picks up his third. Aggies 13 of 20 from the line tonight. Cabongo, 50% four of eight. So I'm going to say he's due to make something. Came into the game shooting over 90%. Watson in for defense. McKinnis takes the seat. The bongo at the free throw line. Nails it. And it's a five-point game again. A minute 17 to play. And that brings the crowd right back into it. Been a great crowd tonight. Really has. Hats off to the student by. Cabongo with the steal. Cabongo's fouled, and that is five on Turner. And just as important, that's the 10th team foul, so it'll be two shots for Cabongo. Here's the trap. And Cabongo with the steal, and foul number five on Turner sends Cabongo to the free throw line. Free throws could cut it to three with over a minute to play in the game. Interesting. You have 60 seconds to make your substitution on a disqualification, and Sean Miller called his entire team over. Now, the referee wants to pull the Aggies out of the huddle. Well, you got 60 seconds. They're using 60 seconds as long as your players are on the court. Not a lot you can do. Better get somebody in there for him, or it's a technical. David Hall and Sean Miller talking right now. And meanwhile, Marvin Menzies has the troops huddled around him. They threw up a graphic during the trap and the steal that the Aggies hitting 10% from the three-point line in the second half. Yeah, one of 10. There it is. Big free throws by Cabongo. Not done yet. And it's gotten louder in here. Didn't think it could. Aggies are trapping. Fog is trapped. Gives it off to Mays. 
Nick Johnson with it, has Cabongo on him at the center circle. Each team with one timeout. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Johnson makes his move. Ball's poked away. Out of bounds. Wildcat basketball. With just seven seconds left on the shot clock. David Hall with the call on the baseline, and we see it again. Need to stop. 35 seconds to play in the game. Seven on the shot clock for the Wildcats. Nick Johnson. Ball drive free and a foul called against New Mexico State. It'll be a one and one for the Wildcats. Shot clock is down to one second. That hurts. Fogg muscled his way between a double team. He's an 81% free throw shooter. tonight we talked about the experience being a senior having been here so many times before deep into the ncaa tournament last year having been there before and now we'll see what an experienced senior can do Robbins checked in for the aggies fog misses the free throw balls kept alive and up with it is fog can you believe that Shot clock is off. LaRoche fouls Mays. Well, Mays only, only shooting 69% coming into tonight. Well, when you needed the rebound. And watch this thing comes out long. Two Aggies had a shot at it, Raman and Napawe, and instead they hit it to the other side of the lane. Both teams in the double bonus, he would have gotten a second one regardless there. Clear the lane. 21.6 seconds to play in regulation. The Wildcats by four. Look for Cabango to drive hard, you think? They need a bucket pass. It's LaRoche driving to the bucket hard. Raman can't handle the rebound. Wildcats secure it. The Aggies fall. Coming up just short. Great ball game to watch there. If you watch this and said, this was fun, come on out. We've got a lot more of this. Perry will go to the free throw line. Jesse Perry, a 6'7 senior, he's had a big night. 6 of 11 from the floor, 13 points and 12 rebounds, his fifth double-double of the year. He's really been a steadying force for them. His rebounding of the uh, misses in the second half have been terrific. And Perry hits them both. Perry with 15.12 rebounds. Cabongo shot won't fall. 